morning, everybody. This is my club. Coming on a very cold, cold day in the Midwest here. We are below in minus uh, nine, I think. Uh, with uh, uh, so much of wind outside, if you howl it outside, it can be anything today, probably. So we should stay put. And I thought I'll take uh, some time and uh, talk with my friends. So, here uh, we were talking about uh, towards wellness oriented health systems yesterday as a philosophy after so many years of practice uh, it kind of developed that and that the heal is the need of the hour for the society as a whole so uh, here i am um, talking about that again um, it may be uh, not the most uh, engaging topic for some people but um, if you look at uh, the full uh, spectrum of health and wellness, uh, I think uh, we can try to spend a lot of time and money and energy to be healthy and well and really uh, enjoy life that way, free of disease and free of ailment and morbidity and all that, right? So that's what I wanted to talk about today. Uh, to everybody, and I can uh, uh, make sense uh, also to people. Um, so, uh, for those people who do not uh, know me, I would like to introduce myself. So let me see. I have a guest here. Uh, let me come back to. Oh yeah, my friend oh, Martin. Hi, Martin. Now. It's been a while. I just wanted to come on and say hello. <laughs> yeah, I was looking for you, but I couldn't find it. So thanks. I came on, you know? Uh, yeah, there are, you know, like I was, I was, I was, I was, I, I am, I was inspired recently to just be like, I might give him a call someday soon. <laughs> yeah, you should. I think we should talk offline more times. Yes, know, yes, so. yes. I will. I, it, there's been a lot going on, but I'm, I'm really, I'm really grateful in my periphery and, and this topic of um, this topic to just talk about wellness yeah. in, in, a, in, in a big sense yes. rather than like, oh, you have to work on this one thing yeah. in your life or, or you have to exercise, you need diet, do you need, like yeah. I have found just in my, my own life that everything is connected and so like That's when it. when you start moving in a direction everything starts coming in and and it's not something and i think that our society yeah really wants to compartmentalize yeah exactly exactly but, yeah but that's not that that just fractures even further our lives and our understanding of ourselves yeah see martin you put it in a perspective that is more what I was uh, aiming at, you know, and that's why we should talk more often. <laughs> yes, 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 we will, we will. I'm going to, you yeah. know, like, I, 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 I want to sit back and I want to listen to some of the stuff that you have to say, so I'm going to just jump off, but I just wanted to come on and say hi. We'll yeah. talk offline, and sure, um, sure. yeah, I, I love your work. It's been great to get to know you this year. Yeah. So grateful for it, and yeah. we'll, we'll be in touch. Sure, Marty. You are one of my favorite people I want to talk to all the time. I look for you, but then I can find you. Oh, maybe Marty is off, something like that. But uh, yeah, we should uh, call each other um, informally outside. I think we'll enjoy that. Mm -hmm. so, yes, me yeah. as well. Me yeah. As well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, sure, sure, Martin. Thanks for coming out. You know. So I think Martin put it very beautifully. That's what I was uh, aiming to. Um, hi, Shiva. How are you? Hi, sir. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. See, like, uh, yeah. I think you are in the matrix, Siva, a little bit. So maybe you're in an area where the reception is not good or something. Maybe. Yeah, that's Siva corrects his uh, uh, microphone. Uh, we will. Uh, start with uh, my introduction briefly. Yeah, I'm a physician uh, practicing in the internal medicine in the United States. Uh, 
all these years. I came here in 81 and I think I joined a residency in 83. And ever since I've been working as physician in the United States, I had my own practice and all that. Now I'm kind of uh, semi-retired, uh, but still uh, active in the field of wellness, very much so. A new beginning. Um, so after 40 years of uh, internal medicine practice, I'm now um, really uh, focusing on the wellness aspect. I'm a CEO, founder of uh, BA Pal, uh, which has services oriented to wellness. Uh, number one is Wellness Club, which I gather people in the morning and in the evening. We kind of do the yoga stretches, breathing, and uh, calming the mind and focusing the mind, things like that. And then uh, uh, in the evening also we do that, and we have the um, uh, consultations. People can call me, and we will talk about that. And uh, uh, we also promote uh, wellness activities community wide. Uh, so um, encouraging people to be healthy and uh, wealthy that way, and then well that way. Yeah. So uh, now Siva is back properly. Siva, are you okay with your microphone now? Yeah. yeah. At my place, actually, I'm having some poor connection, but I can able to hear you, sir. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, so because I wasn't sure, uh, but you are in a matrix. Yeah? Uh, so anyway, uh, we were uh, introducing people to what is this uh, movement about? What is that I was talking about? It is uh, uh, after seeing so much of illness, many of the times I felt uh, this patient should have come earlier or should have taken more action at home so that they don't have to go through this pain and suffering. You know, um, that is uh, chronic diseases developing very slowly underneath us without really uh, coming out on the radar, um, people um, people have warnings about it. People have family history. People have the same lifestyles continuing. And for example, in South India, uh, we eat a lot of idlis and dosas. They're very, very uh, delicious, very tasty, but they're all uh, only calories, empty calories, right? Uh, that diet is continued here in the United States by our you know, South Indian people. And that is not very wise in my viewpoint. Once in a while, good uh, tasting uh, um, dishes are okay, but uh, as a habit and without realizing what is going on in this day and age, I think with all the knowledge that we have, uh, Google at harm and then it can show you what's good for you, what's not, what's empty calories, what's not, what is processed food, what is not, is really known to a lot of people. But it's the taste, it is a habit, it is unconsciously. Uh, taking uh, uh, you know whatever available to us, uh, like in uh, fast foods here in the United States, people go there because it is ubiquitous and it is cheap, and uh, so uh, it is uh, served in a very nice, uh, neat restaurant. So people go there and have it as a convenience and get used to it, and later on they short their health, you know. So that kind of thing. So I wanted people to be aware and conscious on a daily basis with all their lifestyles. Uh, let it be diet, let it be activity, let it be uh, how sleeping patterns or just uh, working with information and how to keep our mind uh, active, that kind of thing, you know. So uh, I always uh, try to bring that awareness to people when I'm talking to them as a doctor. Um, that's okay. All of us will have to do, and that's our duty to really uh, look for the welfare of the patient and then suggest them, uh, can you uh, make these uh, small changes, but the small changes uh, may have to be permanent. Uh, that way you are getting benefited just by changing those. You may save a lot of your quality of life, a lot of your age itself, you know, uh, you can live longer. And uh, also you can avoid a lot of suffering and money and energy and time, all that, right? So I thought that was very sensible. Everybody knows uh, uh, um, an ounce of prevention is uh, more than <laughs> the cure and all that. Uh, but do we do that? Do we actually do that? So it, it needs a concerted effort from the uh, individual community and the healthcare community too. Uh, and uh, as a healthcare community member, I feel it is my duty to do that. You know, uh, so a lot of people um, uh, do 
do come and uh, tell me um, that we are trying to do these things, but uh, we don't know what to do. So that's why uh, uh, individual patients' clinic, uh, individual physicians' clinics are equipped with this kind of material and this kind of information. And one of my plans is as I move into the uh, more of a health uh, care systems, industries, hospitals, I want to establish what are called wellness oasis. That means uh, there is a place in the hospital that you could visit and you could gather a lot of information exclusively on wellness, you know, like uh, uh, information on a particular diet you are interested in or information on a particular style of exercise you are interested in or the problems or opportunities to exercise, that kind of thing can be explored. You don't have to necessarily spend a lot of money to uh, do this exercise. What you need to spend is uh, uh, some imagination, some uh, sit down time, and design a, a, an exercise program and pursue that and also get guidance what is appropriate for you you know uh, suppose you are having a, some heart attack obviously you have to have post heart, uh, heart attack cardiac rehab uh, that is very well developed uh, um, thing but this after the event what i'm saying is how can you avoid those events that's where this uh, working uh, a health system that is promoting uh, wellness that promoting preventive measures that is promoting health maintenance uh, tactics in our daily uh, life you know that kind of thing i was hoping for i could be the beginning of this uh, movement uh, in my particular corner i'm sure a lot of physicians are prescribing for it uh, with the constant education of the patients constant participation in the societies constant participation of giving lectures on this or writing papers or producing literature that can change a lot of outlet. But then we have so much information on the process report. Why are we not able to cut it down? Why are we continuously uh, really going and uh, supporting these McDonald's uh, or Burger King, some of that, knowing that they are going to cause harm to our health? That's my point. That's what I want to uh, uh, inspire. Yeah, Siva, you want to say something? Yeah, so, uh, so much to discuss actually. Because, yeah. Uh, in US, they will take same kind of burgers, all the same, but they will eat salads along with that. Uh, and uh, but uh, what we do is we eat uh, biryanis, uh, and we are, we won't take salad and natural content. Uh, I have seen so many. Uh, cases uh, uh, not only there in western side uh, mm -hmm. uh, in india also so much are worrying with the uh, colon cancer due to this uh, and uh, we have to uh, create awareness not only in the intake uh, but also how to get rid of uh, constipation i have seen uh, so many so many videos uh, from mantan satyanarayan raju and i planned the diet uh, as he mentioned uh, uh, at least one day should be a maintenance day uh, with the honey lemon water in a week uh, eight times or uh, six times according to the requirement uh, yeah. uh, we should do the rest of our digestion system yeah. at least uh, once in a week at least uh, once uh, in uh, for every uh, 15 days at least so no, one, we have to one of the, both, uh, the second Thing. Simple, so simple formula, Siva. Awkward, but uh, this is very important. Yeah. The stool softening techniques uh, and uh, the constipation, how to get rid of constipation is very much important one That's because colon cancer is uh, a big task. Uh, it's a big challenge. Uh, That's uh, we cannot wipe it with the, uh, you know, cancer is uh, nothing but uh, it's not a foreign body. Uh, <coughs> Uh, causing trouble so they, maybe uh, they may find uh, medicine for even for covid 19 but cancer for cancer uh, we have only the chemotherapy or the lifestyle disorder and we have to uh, concentrate on uh, our lifestyle uh, from the beginning uh, once it attacks uh, so many people are facing so many problems uh, the entire family is going to be disturbed uh, so 
uh, my intentions also uh, i have so many points to discuss on this uh, health awareness uh, so i am very much interested i will do my support as uh, uh, always uh, because uh, <coughs> Uh, the intake and the uh, we should concentrate on intake as well as uh, on the constipation to get rid of constipation. You know, Siva, you are not uh, uh, right about uh, these people are all eating in salad here. No, only if very small percentage it is available. For example, if you go to McDonald's, it is available now. Okay? But very few people really uh, see in, say, eating salad. Very few people, the people who are eating yeah, yeah. salad. They don't go to this that much, <laughs> but you know your point yes, is right. Yes. At least uh, here, uh, a lot of health conscious people eat salad. That is there, you know, uh, compared to uh, India. But India is uh, trying to get it. He was mentioning about Mantena. Uh, he is a, a gentleman who runs naturopathy. His ashram. He is uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, very very good. If you can really listen to him, I have a whole sorts of. Uh, a DVD selection, uh, Siva, from him. Uh, it was uh, bought in the 80s, I think, you know. Uh, at the time, he was very young, too. He was uh, doing uh, yoga, he was doing uh, diet, and all that. Uh, even if you follow some of the things he talks about, naturopathy is where they recommend that you walk, you drink a lot of water, and then also you eat uh, fiber rich foods uh, like uh, vegetables and fruits. and all that that aids your uh, constipation. You know, at one time in the United States, people ate only meat and potatoes. Say for centuries, people were constipated here in this country. You know? But lately, the the number of people who are eating uh, salads and the fiber-rich foods is, has grown. You know, and obviously Americans are very active, always working, so they move a lot. That that is there. And the water also, we got to uh, educate people what's appropriate drinking water and all that, you know. What Siva was talking about is there's red meat has shown the association with the cancer of the colon. And uh, this was uh, not there in India that much before. But now with the uh, burger uh, fancy, people are really uh, uh, falling off the traditional diet to, to this, you know. Um, that's what he was trying to address to. And I think that's a very, very good point. You know, only thing you are wrong about is Americans all eating salad. No, <laughs> they don't eat all the all the salad. Not all. Yeah, yeah. At least they are having awareness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it's available. It's available. You know what they call me when I eat salad? I said, you are eating grass. <laughs> I mean, uh, just yeah, yeah. Uh, just uh, as a joke, but still they say, hey, doc, you are eating the grass. But then I introduced this. Uh, uh, salads and everything in 80s, early 80s, when it was not uh, really uh, in vogue. Uh, I was uh, uh, chief of a big hospital and chief resident, uh, not daily chief. They then I went to talk to my administrator, and uh, there was a big uh, uh, cafeteria because the hospital is itself okay, 1200 acres, uh, uh, so many buildings are there, so many employees are there. So the big cafeteria is like a big hotel, right? So we kind of introduced the salads and all the other term fish also was introduced. So they were doing in the cafeteria once a week fish and all that, you know, because there was a study in Japan, very people have heart attack mainly because they were eating this fish and they have this good cholesterol or not. But you know, what Shiva was pointing out it is, it's a health behavior that uh, we need to be aware of uh, like this diet is one of our health uh, lifestyles, right? And what we are spending time on actively choosing good foods and uh, being aware of what can happen if you eat these burgers in the long run, how the cancer risk is uh, high because of the red meat. That's what Siva was mentioning. I think that's a very good uh, point. And uh, that's how you should be aware of individual problems and also collective behavior of this. So how we are not paying attention to all these uh, fast food chains of proliferating all over the world, even though they are proven that they are causing these uh, diseases of civilization, like a hyperlipidemia, uh, high cholesterol, right? And high blood pressure and high blood sugars, all these things I call them diseases of civilization. That means we have refined our diet to our detriment. See, we have polished the rice and the white rice is not good for our uh, uh, blood sugar. 
and uh, white flour here in the United States, white pasta, all those. I tell them simple thing is switch them first to brown, brown rice, brown flour, or brown pasta, and then also uh, mix with a lot of vegetables. Like uh, we go to Italian restaurant, we do, uh, and then uh, after pasta, we are pasta that can be divided among the four because we, uh, me and my wife, my kids, right? We used to go like that. But now my kids are grown up, but at the time they used to come, so we used to divide that. At least at the young stage, they can eat pasta and uh, burn it out. But as you age into that, as your pancreas is getting tired, don't dump a lot of carbohydrate thing. That's where the Indians have to take care of the rice or chapatis or uh, dosas, at least. All those things are uh, civilized uh, products, very tasty, but once in a while is okay. But if you are eating three times a day, every day, that is the problem. You are dumping a lot of carbohydrate on the system and that results in pancreas burnout in the long term. So that's an individual one particular thing we are talking about that's very good that we have to be aware of that but uh, as a system what are we doing with the restaurants what are we doing with the supermarkets what are we doing with the producers of our food all those things have to be established when you're talking about wellness oriented system you know uh, uh, so it's very good that individually somebody is against smoking somebody against alcohol somebody is against uh, uh, this uh, pure carbohydrate diet uh, or uh, inactivity. Oh, yeah, individual practice we have to study. And we already have a lot of knowledge. What, what we need is awareness. You know, once we have the awareness, these things are really taking the sap out of us. Especially in the United States, the amount of money we spend is enormous. You know, and uh, that is where I was really concerned about because if we allow the illnesses to happen, to grow, and to take our energy away, then spend a lot of money on that, that's not working. That's the way we have to, yesterday, there was a very disturbing news for us as healthcare practitioners. The, uh, it used to be we were growing in uh, longevity and then uh, lifespan, it was around 74, something like that, right? Now it has come down to seven months down, right? Uh, so that was a very big uh, last year, one year, and this year, uh, seven months are going down. That means the person who is living 74 uh, years before, now is only 73 years and three months only. So the longevity has gone. It's like a reverse direction of progress, you know. That's a very concerning. So there was a physician from a big system came up, and he was talking about we need to change fundamentally in our uh, lifestyles, in our uh, systems of management and all that. That's what I'm talking about, you know. So uh, now there's more evidence because we are not oriented to the wellness, but responsive only illness as it happens. That's what I wanted to revive. There's no doubt we, are, we seek medical help when you are ill. I'm not against that. That is a very good and we have uh, uh, improved our systems with research and uh, lot of uh, ingenuity on the part of scientists and doctors and all that that's all very good we have the genetics we are using it pretty well we have the microbiome we are using that pretty well but then common sense uh, help people to really preserve uh, uh, our genetic structure and also uh, really understand how that works you know for example uh, we used to have in ayurveda what's called Jesus era that means uh, uh, the seed uh, body, that the seed that is responsible in our body, that is means genetics is responsible for a lot of things, right? So we want to understand it. Now there is a new uh, branch has come out, it's called nutri genomics. Uh, uh, what it is, is the genome can help us determine what kind of foods we should eat. And the foods can also change our epigenetics. So, so that's what I'm talking about tomorrow uh, at uh, 8 p.m. Saturday. That means uh, 7:30 a.m. Sunday for India. You know, I'm going to talk on uh, all these channels again. Uh, LinkedIn Live mainly. Uh, it is a it's a subject important for the professionals uh, to understand where the branch of nutrition is going and where the genome research is uh, providing us a lot of information about 
um, the nucleotide change, uh, transcription change, and all that because of uh, certain uh, um, elements in the food. And we can also change our genetics by choosing our food. That was how I do the practice for centuries. They kind of changed our uh, DNA, not DNA, but genetics as a whole. Uh, and then uh, they really influence your health uh, in the long run, you know. Uh, but then uh, I'm very happy to combine them to understand what is the modern scientific research and how it is going to help us practically. That is where the science is very, very good. But then other way of science, I was also intuitive science that was explored with the intuition, and but they were very good. And then there were also trial and experiments. They did a lot of research in some years, you know. So we should take advantage of that without being superstitious, without being uh, really uh, going back and doing something. But uh, first of all, understand what they have done. You know? So I'm going to try to um, bring some similarities between Ayurveda and their modern sense of nutrigenomics. See, I'm always trying to learn the new uh, findings that are happening in the science. Great respect for that. But I'm also, uh, I think I'm smart enough to look at the old system and understand how they had such a longevity how they had such a vitality in their being, how they had so much energy in their life, how they had so much joy and not suffering with illnesses all the time. And also they were not neurotic. They were more down to earth. They enjoyed their life. They related with everything much better. So I wanted to understand that and bring it to modern life, bring it to the stresses and burnouts and all that we are going through here and now in this life. You know, that is my aim. So in that way, if you look at nutrition, tremendous changes are coming, you know, uh, and that is good for us. You know, if you are smart, if you are going to use that knowledge, if, like the, if they come up with, a, okay, this particular genome you have, and these kind of foods are really bad for you, don't indulge them. I think they will still indulge in them because of the taste factor. So you got to understand how do I really understand the taste, how it is. If you are unconscious about uh, how to uh, eat and then you are eating whatever that place are just because it satisfies your tongue, then you want to pay for it with the chronic disease in the long run, you know. So leave it that, you know, leave it that experience and also uh, withdraw. Some yoga practices are there, pratyahara like uh, uh, you can uh, really uh, withdraw the teeth thing a little bit too. I will tell you a story how they, they were, there was this uh, great teacher in the Himalayas and all the students were uh, very enamored by him and they were very uh, respectful and happy and affectionate towards him. And they wanted to express their affection. So they, in the Himalayas, it's very difficult to get all these mangoes and everything for that, right? So uh, what they did was uh, they went down and then with the great expense and uh, uh, effort, they gained some, uh, you know, uh, uh, needed materials to make a mango lassi. It's like a, a, a nice drink, a very cool drink uh, you can enjoy in summertime, right? Uh, but then they wanted to make it for him. So they bring all the materials uh, and then they make a very good lassi for him. And they give a big glass of mango lassi to him. He, uh, he takes it into a hand, he sips a bit, and then he gives it back. Then the kids are all worried, oh, what sir is not good? Why are you giving it back? They say, he, then he says, no, it is very good. That's why. See, he doesn't want to get indulged and then get bound by the uh, by his own taste. That is what I'm talking. If you cannot be that extreme, at least understand the taste you can develop and lose in 14 days. For example, you are eating something that's not good for you and the doctor tells you, better stay away from it. What you do is you slowly withdraw, you know. Uh, so first start with the tasting at the end of the meal so that you can eat much but a little bit for the taste. Satisfy your taste buds and then go away. And later on, reduce that to slowly and then uh, after uh, stopping it for 14 days if you can stay there then very likely you will not be swayed by the taste you, you can experiment with it and see so it takes 14 days for the same taste buds to survive 
if you can refrain from that, not in a painful way, but like this cajoling way, you can probably uh, overcome any of those days and not suffer from it. But it is temptation, right? So much around and people really uh, get tempted. That's one way to do that. So, so if you take any one particular pillar of wellness, uh, like I said, four pillars are there, right? First pillar is food, second pillar is exercise, third pillar is sleep, and fourth pillar is meditation. These are the four pillars of wellness. If you can show some light on a regular basis, revisit them and change them. Change is small, change very, very little. But then that small change should be permanent. This is what I tell my patient. You make small changes that you can tolerate, that you can maintain. But then make the small change as permanent. For example, if you are eating all carbohydrate food, either here, pasta, or in India, uh, dosa, idli, something like that, uh, what you do is uh, you kind of cut it down, you know, a little bit, you know, and then uh, you will come back to uh, other good food. So first eat the good foods, vegetables, fruits, something like that, and then indulge in this, uh, and then uh, uh, eat slowly, savor it, that way you can eat less in longer time and chew better, that kind of thing. So those small changes that you make, uh, but then you say, okay, I have made a conscious, Awareness full, really considered uh, decision. Now I'm going to abide by. How can I do this? You know, so a lot of it is in our hands because we can be conscious and take conscious action of anything that we do, and that way we will be more successful that way. So, what do you think, Siva, about that? Yeah, uh, you have uh, briefly explained each and every point. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, that's a very big task, actually. Uh, somebody will say smoking, somebody will say uh, drinking is uh, on, uh, it's, uh, it's also injurious to health. Uh, but uh, uh, the realization that eating food for taste, uh, no one say it is, uh, I mean, very few people we can see uh, to give that kind of awareness yeah. uh, might be it might be the reason and we have to uh, work on that actually yeah. because uh, with the affection the moms will give the food to the uh, children especially yeah. uh, you, you are you are you are you are, you are, you are, you are finding so many cases uh, yeah. even in uh, uh, the people the stu i mean children less than 10 years yeah. uh, and 15 years are getting the infection in the blood like that uh, mm. because of uh, because of not having awareness I, uh, I, yeah. I think uh, even they don't have time yeah. and uh, I uh, observed that one is uh, even people get some fever or like that uh, they don't have time uh, they won't give the time for body to uh, uh, react or uh, uh, for uh, uh, I mean uh, to uh, I mean the, the body will take uh, some some kind of time uh, to use some immunological memory and uh, for the, uh, some immune system will work uh, to get rid of uh, the problem whatever whatever the body has uh, it will take some time the people don't have that kind of time also in this busy schedule yeah. that also we can address uh, <laughs> uh, because why I'm telling this one is uh, from the from childhood onwards. Uh, I didn't take the medicine because naturally I try to give the time for, uh, uh, I mean, even fever, if I get or something, mm -hmm. uh, it will be get, I mean, cured within one day. Mm -hmm. So this was helped me uh, when I am in uh, COVID ward about five days, uh, but uh, a mild fever got about one hour, one and a half hour and uh, I, didn't, I, I didn't get sick. Even uh, I, uh, I got uh, very much energy even uh, covid attacked and it was uh, uh, i i became asymptotic uh, and uh, so this uh, this this is uh, 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 this this will come from childhood onwards uh, that uh, uh, we cannot uh, uh, have uh, we cannot give that kind of advice to everyone because uh, uh, that is a, a lifetime achievement from the beginning onwards we should we should take that kind of care but at least uh, we should give some time uh, for the body to react uh, one day if fever comes uh, one day we have to give some time 
uh, and after that uh, taking medicine yeah. appropriate medicine that that also we should address i think uh, Uh, very good, very good. What is your comment, sir? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's a very good uh, one you pointed out, sir. Because uh, what he is talking about is how can we improve our subclinical immunity? Okay, so if you are exposed to a offending agent like a you know some bug, like virus or bacteria, if you go and uh, take something for it right away. you are not allowing the body to develop resistance against the bug you see that's how the natural immunity happens within us right um, now you know, uh, that's a big important thing because there's so much of antibiotic use all over the world and there's so much of antibiotic resistance by the bugs that is growing mainly because we use these antibiotics inappropriately what shiva was talking about is when you have something small that is what happens in india i have seen that too my mom other people and other uh, they don't go jump right away to take something they try to fight it off you know that is also valued in america because they they think in a tough way and say let's fight it out you don't have to be baby like that and all that but then after late what happened was there was so much enormity uh, enormous attraction to antibiotics by the generations of uh, americans here so if they have something like a cough or cold even though it is a virus it doesn't need antibiotics because it's not like a uh, bacterium that's causing the problem it's a virus where it doesn't need that antibacterial medication they come and then plead with you or beg with you or demand with you to give antibiotics as a physician we were sometimes put in a very very awkward position because we know it's a common cold this kid doesn't need antibiotic but then uh, patient uh, uh, the uh, the father or mother who come there they are kind of condition that i have to have this antibiotic for my kid to get better you know otherwise is and also excessive cleanliness you know so they don't allow the kids to um, really uh, develop the natural immunity by playing and by uh, developing some uh, injuries and healing them and all that right so this is called subclinical immunity whenever you are exposed to a bug if you can uh, hold on to it say we will do a cautious watch we tell them okay fever should not be more than this you know uh, if it is then then uh, use the cold sponges or some uh, anti uh, paracetamol tablets or something like that i i don't even even want to use that much of that either especially in elder so either way you allow the subclinical immunity to be improving gradually uh, there was a pediatrician uh, um, that she has experimented with her toddler what she did was she she didn't give him shoes she gave him socks and uh, she allowed him to run around uh, and they why he gained a uh, lot of infections but they were not serious and he got over them by himself and he, uh, he developed a robust uh, immunity in the immune system what happens is if you present an insult like this coronavirus has come because an novel virus uh, we don't have the immunity built in but otherwise what happens with the mold infection is we already have uh, developed infect uh, oriented immunity and that immunity happens in all of the called herd immunity right so to grow that you got to really understand how this whole cycle of agent which is the bacterium or the virus and the environment in which we grow and the host is us see most of the time we neglect the host we can kind have of attack the virus or to kill it and all that we can kind have of clean the environment but we don't do much on our own to improve our own resistance or strength of immunity i have a uh, routine that i show in my yoga routine where from head to toe you do certain things to improve the lymph flow the lymph flows from uh, legs all the way to the head right there are so many uh, lymph nodes at several areas you know like you have uh, uh, above the clavicle below the clavicle around the skull and also in the neck and also in the thorax and the abdomen and also in the inguinal area axillary area and all that right uh, but then the lymph goes up so it needs uh, like a, a pump right 
the whole cosmos is, is the real primary motive, primary uh, pump of that uh, circulation, both Venus and also Leo. So uh, I, I make them do all the exercises, including the calf exercises. exercises. Uh, that's a very simple thing. You stand on the toes and go down and then stand on the heels. You know, stand on the toes and then go down and stand on the heels and lift the toes. That kind of thing really uh, strengthens your calf muscles. But also we do uh, pulling on the ears and then uh, pressing on the scalp and on the neck and also uh, doing the rotations at the shoulders for the axillary, like that. Number of, uh, there's a routine there. I make my students do that uh, during the uh, yoga practice, you know. Um, that is at least if you do once or twice a week, that will help. Especially in COVID time, I made them do that very much. That and also pranayama to help with the breathing. See, so this, uh, uh, what uh, Shiva was talking about is, uh, he was talking about how can I build my own immunity by uh, slowly. But then uh, uh, if you do it from the childhood, like Shiva was saying, that's good. But a lot of people do not have this awareness or the environment is so pressing sometimes. Suppose you are a mom here, you are a single mom, you have a kid uh, that is sick. She was worried about missing the work. She was worried about uh, the kid getting bad and all that. There's so many factors are there. And then her uh, first impulse is, let me get something that will get better. He will not get much for the sick. That's why she thinks uh, she is brainwashed that only antibiotics will work. Antibiotics appropriate at the correct time, they will work. But then if you use them too liberally for the society as a whole, we are breeding antibiotic resistance and we are uh, spending more and more money on newer and newer antibiotics. And these super antibiotics cost a lot. Some antibiotics cost $10,000 per injection, you know, so it is there. So there are life threatening infections that can happen that can spread all over. And for those infections, we don't have any immunity and we don't have the uh, antibiotics to give because these bugs are resistant to those antibiotics. What we do in the hospital is it's called antibiogram. What we do is we collect the is like a big hospital. What are the bugs that are there? What are the bacteria? What are the kind of things are there? And then we see which one is uh, responsive to uh, cheap antibiotic to costly antibiotic, right? We encourage people to use simple, cheap, uh, first line drugs, first, you know, but then they get them so resistant so easily, you go to the second generation, then you go to third generation, now you are fourth or fifth generation, right? And these bugs that were uh, uh, resistant, they grow in quantity in the community. So more people are exposed to the antibiotics okay, that's happening in the tuberculosis, for example. Tuberculosis, uh, for a long time, they had no medications, right? And then after 50s and 60s, we have these medications, we have refined them, we have uh, so many lines of uh, medication we can do. But then there is a uh, TB resistant bacteria, TB is, is growing now, you know, uh, that bacteria causes TB and then which is very, very difficult to treat. In New York, we have seen them, uh, there's some 13 years is growing. And uh, worldwide, it is growing more too. So that kind of dangers are there. What we thought we eliminated a danger and they're coming back because of our lack of awareness of this antibiotic resistance and also need for um, how to improve your immunity. Now, I will say briefly some common sense things that you can do to improve your immunity. First of all, have a balanced life. And then uh, respond to your body and eat when you are hungry, drink when you are uh, really thirsty, and then sleep when your body needs sleep. Okay, and then uh, eat uh, nutritious, vitally rich food. That means fresh foods, you know, fresh foods, uh, freshly made food that has got this prana, the vitality in that. You know, 45 minutes after cook, eat that. That's why it's the best to eat from a pan to plate. That means you just made it on the uh, on the stove, and uh, uh, like a, suppose you are making like a uh, bread, and that is uh, very very hot and nice. You know, uh, some people eat omelet fresh from uh, made on the pan to plate, that kind of thing. You know, uh, any foods like that, if you make them eat right away, that is good too. And also the content of the 
food should be vitally rich, nutritious, right? This is where the nutrigenomics is going to play a big role. You know? And then once you eat and all that, don't eat snacks in between. Reserve yourself for the main meals, you know, two or three times a day. Not by the time, but by how you get hungry. Okay? A lot of people stick by the time, whether, whether the break or whatever it is, right? But if you can really see that I'm hungry, then I'll eat. If I'm not hungry, I will not eat. That, that's a good thing too. That way you will avoid fasting and all those things that you Otherwise, if you have to fast, I would recommend a simple formula of skip the seventh meal every time. You know, you have taken seven meals and then skip a meal and then go. That will be a good thing too. But for me, uh, personally, I don't eat by the clock, but I, do, I eat by my body clock. My body will tell me when I really need. Suppose I'm doing a lot of physical work. Obviously, I have good appetite and I'll eat very well. If I am not, then I'm doing some exercise. And all. In the morning, you can drink a lot of uh, warm water and go to the bathroom, have a good bowel moment, and then do some exercise before. Unless you are a diabetic, you are prone for hypoglycemia, I would not recommend to take something right away. But work up the appetite by doing exercises and then eat. But have a good meal at the breakfast. That's very important. And then you will go to, to, to the day and expend that energy to work, right? And then uh, don't have to eat just because you have to eat. But you are hungry and you have good food available, then eat it. And when you come home, eat early and give two, two or three hours for the uh, digestion to happen. So following your body clock, which is very, very natural, which is very, very good for your health, maintains the homeostasis, okay? If you do that, very well. So that's the food. As an activity, if you can do yoga, that will massages your internal organs, your uh, sustenance of those organs go up, and then your functioning of the immune system itself goes up too. Uh, also, I told you those routines you can do. Or you can do aerobic exercise, uh, at least uh, 20 minutes, uh, five times a week, that's good enough, you know. Uh, but the principle there is, get your heart rate work up to a rate and then maintain it for at least a few minutes. You can start uh, working on a treadmill for a couple of minutes, then increase the heart rate, uh, uh, I mean, speed to such that the heart rate goes up and maintain that uh, elevated heart rate at least 15 minutes, 20 minutes, and then wind down, you know. That kind of activity every day is very, very good. It goes a long way to improve your immunity. You know? And sleep. Sleep well. Don't sleep uh, um, like a few hours and also a lot of dreams and all this. So if you are attentive, if you can really clear your mind and then uh, go to sleep, that's much better. You know? And also, don't have, don't harbor negative thoughts. Okay? Uh, sleep on positive thoughts. If you do that, that also helps your immunity too. Just being happy, just sharing, just giving itself is a powerful uh, stimulator of good things, good hormones, and thereby good immunity too. So there are so many ways you can improve your lifestyle that can improve your immunity. Does that make sense, Siva? Yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> that means a lot. And, uh... Uh, uh, and almost uh, we discussed uh, all the things and uh, that what what we have to do is just uh, uh, we have to uh, create some awareness uh, especially because uh, the I mean, rich people uh, uh, are I mean three categories if you consider the people rich people are middle class are uh, no, uh, I mean, uh, those who are having low income so the middle class people uh, now because they are unable to pay so much amount uh, all those things they will they, they are uh, getting somehow awareness <laughs> uh, as that is what just i have observed uh, uh, that's one point i would like to make and uh, another point is uh, 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 we have to uh, create more awareness uh, on, on the constipation to how to get rid of constipation and 
uh, whenever they are getting problems uh, how, i mean i i have seen some uh, videos and i also do practice if if i get any problem i, I will go for doing plain water enema like that so these are also things we have to discuss i think uh, <coughs> Uh, according to immune system, you, you have like, uh, one more doubt also I am having. Uh, so, uh, because you just mentioned about uh, COVID-19, uh, the virus, we are concentrating on vaccines, uh, on those things, and how if we just uh, uh, create awareness on um, the what we can say, the, the TMPRSS2 inhibitors uh, and uh, furin inhibitors, uh, uh, those kind of foods uh, will inhibit the NGMs, uh, which will help the uh, COVID-19 to enter into the receptors. Uh, so that also we could discuss uh, like one topic. Uh, these are the points I would like to uh, discuss. Just, uh, thank yeah, you. I have done uh, COVID coping skills and I've entered extensively into that. Uh, COVID is kind of controlled here in the United States, uh, but still we have cases going up, you know, uh, but uh, not as uh, BF, uh, BF5 now, the Omicron variant is causing more cases, uh, uh, but then uh, we are not having that kind of fatality rate that it used to have. Uh, I have talked about all these things uh, way back too, but we can talk about it again. Uh, but the, here I want to consider the health system itself, you know. Uh, these are all individual components which are important to be considered on their own. But any number of people talk about this. But still, people having chronic diseases, poor outcomes, and also suffering a lot. That is why I'm addressing the system as a whole, where we individuals fit in. You know? Let's see, Sudha is here. Hi, Sudha. How are you? Hey, Doc. How are you? I am great. How are you doing? Well, um, I have joined Midway. I'm not sure what I heard is, I mean, I'm not able to uh, make it to sum up. No. Uh, but here's a question, um, probably maybe off. Let me off put, topic. It, put that room in context, then you can go ahead, okay? Uh, what, what it is, is, after working for so many decades as a physician treating illnesses, uh, I thought that was not ever, that was important for me to do the job because people come to me when they are ill, I have to treat them, I will, I'm happy. But I was always worrying about what are the roots of this disease, uh, how can we change? Then, as I learned about the ancient practices, they were living much more, much more healthy and commonsensical with awareness. They were drinking pure water, they were eating uh, good food, uh, nutritious, uh, fresh foods. And also, they were not thinking too much. They were sleeping very well. They were following the body clock. They don't have these uh, late nights or music jams, or all those things that we do as modern people, which is once in a while is okay. But doing every day, kind of destroying the body clock, that is my issue. So that's why I wanted to bring in wellness, not only for the individual, but through the individual, through the society, to the greater part of health system. Health systems themselves should be focusing more on making people practice wellness at home and then also coming when they need our help with illness. That is the thrust of it. So it's a bigger, bigger goal of uh, educating everybody to see the need for the wellness oriented health system and participate in their own way. And in the process of education, I want to bring the awareness, education that is needed. That is the context of this room, Sudha. Wow, <laughs> that's extensive, but yeah. uh, I hope you are doing really great with it and people are reaching out to you for their uh, different other... Yeah, you know, I, I myself practice this. Okay, I'm 68 now, right? I don't have a single medication because I don't need them. You know, why I say that not an egotistical statement, but an example, what we can be done. It's, that's a, it's a very simple, you know, uh, our lifestyles are kind of pure and then be aware of what I'm eating, what I'm breathing, what I'm drinking, how I'm sleeping, how I'm working, am I having full energy and am I enjoying that kind of simple questions. If you put yourself sincerely, then you can see, okay, there are certain things. Suppose I'm depleted energy at work, 
I'm kind of really uh, stressed out or burned out. There's so much help to really address that, you know. Then you will be working and you will be enjoying your life much better. Okay, so you want to say something? Come on. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, my father, my mom is a homeopathy doctor, so I'm pretty aware of yeah. this entire uh, you know, understanding of uh, health systems and all that. Um, but my question is, like, I, I keep asking her to, nowadays everybody are turning their, um, they have their home kits uh, for everything they know. They're completely aware of the conspicuous amount of information that's hanging in, um, in you know, internet, web world. Uh, do you really think people are living, you know, trying out those things? Too much of information about yeah. medicine, too much of information about healthy living, well-being. Yeah. The, yeah. This massive, you know, it's like a black hole just pulling you inside it. Very good. But Very good point, and, Sudha. Very great yeah, point. Because this is information age, you know, and that the, brings a lot of problems. It brings a lot of information, a lot of know-how at the uh, democratization of data, we call it. I'm a data person too. I'm a master's in biomedical informatics. So one of my things is examining uh, information when it is appropriate and when it is detrimental. So information overload, what it is doing is it is making people neurotic. It is people making very anxious, people uh, depressed from all that too. Uh, people are becoming more lonely because they don't have the skills to make relations uh, with other people uh, very well with all this uh, uh, application with just uh, look up everything on Google. So you don't go to uh, a wise person's talk and listen and learn, but you want to look it up on the Google as something philosophically very, very significant. You know, Yesterday we were talking about Ramanujan. Somebody sent uh, a link to Wikipedia. Wikipedia is nothing but gathering information, right? Lot of it. But then what uh, 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 Ramanuja has an intuitive awareness, you won't get it just because you are burying yourself with a lot of uh, information. So information should lead to insight, which will give you wisdom in any particular endeavor, any particular style of life. You know, that is missing because People are not stopping and reflecting on what is the information I'm observing, what is that understand this, what kind of insight I have, how does that throw light on the wisdom from that. For example, if you are talking about water purification, then learn about it. All the scientific research, everything is very good. Observe the information. But then are you applying that information in your daily life? That is the question. Okay. That's where people are, if you take a small dietary change or, so you can have the information which I encourage my patients to investigate, research and all that, but also understand there are legitimate sources, there are uh, sources that are not really uh, uh, good intentions and they, they may want to spread everything. For example, I was just uh, listening to somebody in the morning uh, on the Indian uh, uh, COVID and it seems the WhatsApp groups are spreading all sorts of things like uh, food wave is already here, food wave is killing so many people. So that kind of disinformation or misinformation is very dangerous. So you got to be responsible. Of course, government agencies, regulatory bodies, they will do their job to cut down. But as individual also, we should be beware of what information we're exposing to. And what are we doing with that information? That's the question. See. Uh, if you really take the information science, what it is, is you have only 110 bits at a time that you can absorb. You know? I recommend a book uh, called, uh, I think, um, uh, Wrapped or uh, Row or uh, other books. Three books are there for with me. Uh, uh, in those books, what they discuss is at any given moment, you have only that many bits of information you can take. But if you are taking 10 bits here, 10 bits there, 10 bits there, you won't understand anything. So whatever you do, you kind of uh, think yourself completely into it with complete attention. That is eroding because too many distractions are produced by the information age. So what I tell people is attention to every action. Repeat, attention to every action. Whatever you do, 
give your complete attention to that at that time. Thereby, you really can understand what you are talking about. You don't have distractions so that you are half full and then go away. So this is the need of the hour because all this social media, all this uh, information flowing, uh, too much information can do that. And other thing is, how about your mind? What is happening in your brain? Because if you overload with too much information, you have what's called brain fog or overwhelm or stress because you are neurotically thinking the same thing again and again. So many kids are addicted to uh, what we call uh, uh, what we call uh, phone addiction, right? Uh, they can't uh, put the phone away. They're always worried about uh, uh, losing their phones and they have to have that uh, phone continuously, you know. So that, that, that's a real problem with people. So information, beware. Use it uh, with uh, real uh, trepidation and also be aware that a lot of people are trying to guide you uh, guide you in the wrong way. Mm -hmm. Well, well, so well said. Um, yes, information is the key. Information is the master, but the point is how we process it, how we, yeah. uh, it, it's vulnerable and it keeps changing. There is no standard for it because it's some of the information that's available in, you know, online is fabricated we never know on the same topic you can find diversified top you know experts giving their own opinions on it so it's sometimes very difficult for a follower to stick back to you know what exactly one can do in certain scenarios so it's very difficult to maneuver certain kind of techniques yeah. so it's always good to hear from the horse i mean from the mouth of the horse i believe exactly. <laughs> the doctors exactly. is the practitioner yeah, that's where I'm uh, questioning doctors. So are you uh, spending enough time on this? For example, I spend a lot of time on how you relax, how you rest. That's very important. A okay? lot of people don't pay attention to that. They just go on working, 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 and then break down. Okay? But uh, just to remain to continuously is not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about unwinding really uh, giving a rest, you know, like uh, my friend the other day, he's an um, information manager too, but he's also a, a banker. I think he has three screens, so he's, he looks at all of them, right? For example, I have my study, I have one, two, three, four screens there, you know, there's a fourth, fifth screen, there are five screens out there. If I am enamored by this and continuously occupied without really uh, taking a break or anything like that, then I'm going to drive my mind with, uh, you know, I'm going to whip it, right? Whip it, whip it until it uh, kind of ties and uh, falls down. The heart's whipped so many times, it is going to lose its uh, power like that. Take a break. So what I recommend to the physicians who reach out to me for the burnout coaching, I tell them every one hour, just take a minute break where you can bring your attention back to your breath and take deep breaths with focus, with attention, awareness, um, all the one minute. Then what happens is that rapid thinking, we are in the stream of thought, I call it. We are on the train, right? We break that. And then we come back to our present moment of stillness. The more you cultivate that, the better you are in charge of your thought flow and process. And people are not doing that. They say, oh, I'm doing meditation, I'm doing uh, mindfulness and all that. But uh, they don't understand what it is to be silent, what it is to unwind, what it is to rest, not only physically, mentally, emotionally also. If you get worked up, if you get reactive all the time, then you are putting yourself, setting yourself up for, uh, for a call. So I teach what's called respond but don't react that easily. Don't react to all trivialities with a big deal. Like for example, you are going in the car, somebody says something, that fellow being a stupid and fool to call some name to you, which you have done nothing with him, that is his own problem. So you don't have to react to that, you know, uh, but people allow themselves to react and when they get angry, when they get upset and all that, what they're doing, they are secreting stress hormones within their own system by their reaction. 
So be smart about it and we say that is his problem. He was being negative. So why do I have to react to it? So slowly it will down onto you where you don't have to react to many number of things. And maybe that's important, urgent, that we need to do something. That's fine. See, that's what happened. You see, age old, way back, we have real dangers. We have so many dangers. The snakes are there. The, the elephants are there. The tigers are there. They will kill you. Uh, if you don't uh, um, uh, bolt and uh, run from there, that's why you need the sympathetic overdrive to make you run and then get away from the danger. But now we imagine dangers. We see dangers where there's no danger. Even in our friends, in our family, we see uh, threat and all that. Then we secrete small amount of stress hormones on a continuous basis in a day's activity. So what I do is I train people in the morning about deep breathing. That really calms that sympathetic drive and also stimulates the opposite one, which is the parasympathetic drive in our system, which is the rest and digest. And the more deep breathing you practice through the day, the better you are. So you, even if you, even though you react to certain information and all that, you can really say, why am I reacting like this? Is this important? Is this trivial? Is it something I, not related to my life, not too meaningful, that kind of uh, uh, we call viveka. That means discriminating what is real, what is not, what is false, what is not, uh, that kind of thing. You know, if you do that, slowly your mind and brain grow in wisdom so you don't have to react to all the small things. Make sense to that? Exactly. Uh, I completely uh, resonate with your thought on uh, the power of stillness. Mm -hmm. uh, look, here's my question the same. When there's so much of chaos around you, when people are talking about COVID again, hitting in China and soon to hit maybe some cases, maybe some faked news coming up. So how can we still maintain the stillness? Should we schedule a time? Is there any specific place to yeah. choose? Yeah. You just spoke about it so good, but I, I'm just trying yeah. to find out other you, ways to stay yeah. still. I'll give you what I do. Okay. That, 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 you know. So you get up in the morning, right? So that um, from the sleep, take a few moments for yourself. Okay. What it is, is just be aware of what is where you are, what uh, place you are, what is around you. Be aware of the wind howling in the, in the outside. Be aware of the weather pattern that's going on and what is really happening in the weather outside of you. Here and now. Okay? Bring yourself here and now in the morning. First one hour after you get up is very important to stabilize your nervous system. Okay, So what you do is uh, you just uh, be with yourself. Be with your, what is happening around you. Go out. Uh, and look at the trees and grass and all that. Like smell the roses, they say. Like that. Okay, And don't open the devices. Don't open any of the information and all of that, okay? Unless some emergency from the family member or something like that, you can be like, I can open if the nurse calls me for an emergency. That's the difference, right? Otherwise, I don't want to unconsciously open the devices, welcome all the gossip of the world into my head, okay? First, that's one thing. The other thing is, through the day, whatever you do, just ask yourself this question. Am I here? Am I present or not? So that is a, the app I used to have on my, not app, a picture. It says uh, um, uh, AIP, am I in the present? It represents that, the three letters. And then you check yourself once in a while, then you will come down to the present. And in the evening, you got to do something before you go to bed. Suppose you are in the bed, you are about to sleep. 15 minutes, 20 minutes, one hour, whatever you can do. Uh, people say just meditate and all that. What I am saying is review what has happened the day and then put them up so that your mind is a clean slate. So if you practice in the morning being aware and through the day trying to be in the present and in the evening, unwind and wipe off all the dirt you have gathered during the day. Like for example, I prefer people go in the reverse there. Nine o'clock, nine that I'm going to sleep, for example. Nine o'clock, what happened? Eight o'clock, what happened? Seven o'clock, what happened? 
evening what happened, lunch what happened, in the morning what happened. That kind of review of that. And then if you have something you reacted that was trivial, you just let it go. This requires practice. You get it slow. And it is important, write it down on a paper and then forget it for the night. That gives you tremendous rest to the mind and brain because you are not thinking anymore, right? You have put all those things outside your mind. So when you get up in the morning, you can take the list and see what are important later. But first, don't do that right away. Just to give the one hour for yourself. People don't do this because they think, oh, I'm wasting one hour. Yeah, you're wasting your whole life by being neurotic like this, by being burned out, by stressed out. So dealing with this so much information requires that you slow down yourself a little bit. Mm. Well, right now, I think um, everybody are dealing with FOMO. Mm. What's your take on this, doctor? Yeah, fear of losing. I mean, the uh, missing out. Yes. Is, is, see, you got to you got to first have a good purpose and meaning in your life. Look for that. Sit down and then find out what is meaningful for me. What am I doing? What makes sense for me? My relations, my career, my um, aspirations, and all that. Right? People don't spend time with themselves and then figuring it out. The, instead. They're going on an unconscious, uh, uh, you know, journey uh, where they don't uh, know what happened and the, whatever the actions that they have done unconsciously result in uh, some consequences. Then they will they are going to regret about. It. So first of all, what is life for me? Life is today. I'm talking to Sudha, I'm talking to Siva, I'm talking to all these uh, good people that have come up, and uh, I'm uh, here and now. My focus is on you guys, right? So that is life for me in the present. Past is gone. Even half an hour ago, what I talked and all that is gone. Future is not yet here. But we allow ourselves either in the past or in the future. Check yourself and then say, what is happening now? That, that is what am I in the present brings you. So then you are going actively towards your purpose, towards your meaning then whatever else happens, you are not going to miss out on it because you are doing what is meaningful. Uh, are you from the, are you... Sorry, I didn't get you. Are you uh, in I'm... India? Am I from what? India? Yeah, no, I'm from India. Okay, I'm, I, I, I thought you are uh, from India or not. I'm just checking because in India, there is this uh, um, dharma, the Kama Moksha. Those four types are uh, described uh, way back for the lifestyles. People can pursue their pleasures, their uh, uh, desires, and all that's the Kama. But then you are happy only uh, transiently, and later on, that may not be permanent happiness. Likewise, Abdha means uh, you can earn money, you can get engaged in the career, build up on all of that, you know. That could be meaningful for a while, but ultimately you will find that's also not meaningful. So, but both these uh, desires and also earning money, they have to be in a dharma, that means righteous way. You have to do them in the proper way. Otherwise, they'll get you again. Then, um, if all these things are not, what is important is the moksha. That is, really from your own mind, your own um, desires, like the fear of uh, missing out and all those things are also fears that are activities of mind. You understand, you go uh, beyond it, then that is a really uh, fulfilled uh, self and really meaningful, uh, makes a lot of sense. So that's why people aim for that. But a lot of people don't understand what it is because they're so occupied with uh, their fulfilling their desires or making money or whatever, right? Uh, it's not necessarily wrong. It is just that they are not going to be completely fulfilled if you pursue only that. But they lead to something uh, of a good body and then good mind where you can sit down and meditate and find out this truth, then you are really fulfilled. That's why I give away a lot of value to the ancients uh, exploring deep into themselves and finding answers that are human, but that are very valuable for us. 
all these rituals and others should prepare us to focus like that. But then modern Indians got caught up in these rituals thinking they will give them. No, it is your own investigation into yourself that gives you that moksha. Once you realize that fulfillment within you, you don't have anything to fear. I don't uh, um, um, have to fear like I'm missing or something because I found something uh, they call Amrit Banda, that is uh, never dying fulfillment within ourselves. Yeah, I'm a bit curious when, at what age have you got that? <laughs> because how much, how much long have I have to wait to, you know, uh, resolu uh, yeah, you know, yeah. come to a resolution that, okay, I'm done with this FOMO mm. because it's spread everywhere. I'm into different business verticals. Yeah. I'm into growth. I'm into, yeah, sometimes loneliness. And I'm caught between all these um, worldly things. So when will I attain my Amrita Bandhar? Yeah, it is there already. You don't have to strive for it. We think we have to strive for it. What we have to avoid is, we think we are not, we have to avoid that. Then stay silent with the superficial mind, then you are already there. So all the gunk that we accumulate about our mind, about our uh, impressions and about our conclusions, Examine them. Are they true? Then they fall off. So what you do is practice silence, being silent, and then not carrying away with the superficial talk all the time. And this is important too because a lot of mental illness is uh, because of what we think about ourselves. You know, even though or we think that person may be doing that, this person may be doing that. Uh, they have to measure up to their opinion. Uh, judgment. But ultimately, you are the judge of yourself. Nobody knows who you are inside except yourself. Suppose you are jealous, you are angry, you are kind, you are compassionate, whatever it is, you know about it. You, if you want to cover it up and then, uh, you know, really go into some mess and some uh, um, conclusive thought about yourself, that's your business. But still, you are going to have the consequence. So, it's a question of realizing See, they said realizing, not reaching, not gaining, not uh, uh, really, really getting it. It's realizing means it's already there. You have to realize it by calming your superficial mind. Well, <laughs> it's there. Yeah. I think I need to ponder, I need to do some self introspection. Yeah. Exactly. And that's exactly what to do. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. It's not listening to me. It is listening so that you understand I have to turn inside and then turn inside. Self-inquiry. Mm -hmm. Dr. Rao, that's wonderful. I uh, really had I mean, a bunch of time over here hearing you. Yeah. You've been like eloquently sharing such wonderful uh, you know, pearls of information. Not just information, something that is doable. Yeah. That's more yeah. required. It should be, yeah. The DIY Zamana. Is yeah. this. So I, I, I really love to hear you more, but I need to rush out. So yeah, thank sure. you very much yeah. for uh, putting I think me out I will also end it Hello, because Hello. it's almost one hour, one hour I talked about all these things. But I want to make this a habit so that people will say, hey, what is that Dr. Rao was saying, you know, and then they pay attention to this. And they start to uh, experiment with uh, some of the things I was talking about. And I'm sure they see them lots of times, but they don't make time for this because they are, uh, you know, served by something, right? But then once they stop and look at it, it's not that hard, really. Yep, it's a pleasant place to stick by. And yeah. uh, why not listen to yeah. such wisdom? That's been experimented. There are trial and errors that happened probably in your experience. Yeah, well, one thing I, one thing I can tell you, Sudha, I am silent inside. I'm not driven by, oh, God, to achieve, achieve that, achieve this, and all that. Even if I come here, I don't care how many people come here. My job is to say what I have to say. If uh, Siva is the only one, I will talk to him. That's enough for me, you know. Uh, but then if more people come, that's fine too. So there is a silence within and joy within, happiness within, peace within. That is there 
and everybody can realize that you don't have to have a particular religion or particular uh, creed or sect or anything like that. Actually, the more you are into that, the, the difficult this becomes. Otherwise, there is a, something for the human being with their intelligence. Any human being can turn in world and find this Amrut Bandha. Antarmak, Chitambaram, they call it. So I have a great respect for these uh, uh, great rishis who have a simple life outwardly, very rich life inwardly by calming their superficial mind and then allowed themselves to be uh, intuitively aware of these universal truths. With that, we'll oh, stop that's there. Yeah. My gratitude for your taking of your time, and I, I'll be following you. That's out of my personal interest. I'm greedy to hear more about more from you. Yeah, tomorrow night, uh, Saturday night for me. Sunday morning for you. Uh, Eight o'clock uh, Saturday night for me. Uh, that is seven thirty morning Sunday for you. I'm doing this neutra genomics. How is the genetic code is influencing the nutrition, or nutrition influencing the genetic code? So I think that's a very important topic coming up. Uh, as a scientist, I'm very interested in that. As a yogi, I'm interested in that too, because Ayurveda also talked about this way back. So I'm going to uh, shed some of my understanding on that. I'm still learning, but I want to share whatever I know with my friends. Thanks for bringing those diversities to this uh, clubhouse. And um, well, uh, it's time for me to move out. Yeah, maybe. Thank you, everyone. And bye for now, doctor. Okay, so that, thank you. I'm also taking leave now because it is already one hour over. Uh, I was coming here for one hour. Um, but, uh, uh, okay, Shiva, thank you for coming up and contributing to the talk and uh, uh, simple Arjun Sofa. You know, Sophie. I'll be seeing you guys uh, um, probably uh, tomorrow evening. My turn. Thank you. Somebody wants to come up. Uh, let me talk to. Him. Hi. Doctor Rao, I'm Sundar. I've been in your rooms many times. It's always uh, something that you had. Yeah, I remember so I, you. I that I, yeah, I remember you. How are you? I'm doing good, Doctor Rao. Okay. I'm really doing good. Uh, Doctor Rao. Uh, if, if, uh, I mean, I know that you are closing the room. Uh, for closing, probably if you can answer this one question. Sure, uh, sure. See, there are many, many practices, uh, doctor, and especially with the moment you mentioned about the practice of uh, uh, observing the breath every hour. Mm. Oh my goodness, that's uh, that's brilliant, actually. Uh, and uh, if uh, you were talking about neutrogenetics also, but I would like to, uh, I'm, I'm curious about one question in uh, neuroplasticity. Yeah. For example, every one hour, if I would like to breathe, uh, I mean, uh, observe my breath and go uh, travel inside. Uh, uh, how long do you feel that uh, one should uh, practice so that it becomes functional or a natural habit? Uh, as oh, yeah. Sure. Yeah. The neuroplasticity plays a big role in this symptom because uh, uh, what it is is uh, if you allow unconscious thought to go on repeated, that gets uh, you know cemented, really grounded into your cortical areas, right? There's an actual neural path that happens because you are reinforcing the same thought again and again and again. So. Uh, that is what happens uh, with this unconscious, repeated uh, thoughts, you know. To break that stream, you are coming back intentionally to the present moment by taking the deep breath and bringing your attention, not on the stream of thought, but away from it towards the movement of the air and then feeling of that on, the, on your nose and really touching that and bringing your attention to that. That is uh, uh, like a, taking your attention away from the stream of thought to putting this, right? That active attention, the more you do it, the more it will be um, cemented like the unconscious thought. So this habit of taking deep breath and 
expanding the lungs, you know, uh, all the air going in, and your focus is on that, really makes a break in your neurotic thought. That is a fundamental idea about uh, breathing every minute. Otherwise, you're going to run this engine of thought continuously, and uh, it will be uh, either uh, becomes uh, really too much to handle, and people cannot sleep and all that, or it kind of breaks you, right? So you want to reverse that kind of harmful, uh, unnecessary, unnecessary way of thinking. See, before it used to be a job is there, you have fun, you can play, you can do everything, and then go and do your work and then retire, right? But nowadays, thinking has become kind of continuous, constant, and they don't break it, okay? For, for, suppose if you are practicing being in the present moment awareness, that's why I call this present moment breathing break, PMBB, every one hour, one minute, right? If you do that, then you are coming deliberately to the present moment and that becomes your habit and then very soon you will be uh, really standing apart from your stream of thought and observing that thought as object, right? Then uh, uh, your other habit becomes reinforced. That is where the neuroplasticity works too. And you can shape your own brain according to how you are not thinking. Got it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, you I, I'm very that. happy, Sundar, that you brought the neuroplasticity <laughs> because uh, that is the current research and it's very true. But then in yoga, they they took down this, but they practice this because first of all, the people who are thinking I told them, okay, if you better are you thinking, make sure they are positive especially before you go into sleep, right? That way, your whole circle of sleep will be positive, reinforced with the positive thoughts, at least that much. That way, you get up in the morning very positive. But actually, they go, they talk about quieting the thought, going beyond thought, there's those next steps they on. But at least in the beginning, be aware that I'm thinking too much, I'm thinking too much negative, and change that to positive. Then it will, that's why they said, Pratipaksha Bhavana. That means when you see the negative thinking, replace the negative thinking with something positive around it. This is called cognitive reframing in the modern psychology. But then uh, in yoga, they call it the Prithipaksha Bhavana. So uh, making thought objective, observing the object, identifying the negativity, and then really replacing the negativity with something positive. Like for example, if something is overwhelmingly negative, you cannot do anything about it, and you say, this too shall pass. That's a very, very positive statement for that situation. And then you go so, in positivity. So true, Doctor. Doctor, uh, uh, why asked was also, uh, apart from me practicing it, uh, and I really wanted to get those answer from your side, I have uh, a small uh, passion of going to the schools. And in fact, uh, uh, before every class, I asked uh, children learn better than us. Uh, I mean, they're more adaptable. So before starting of every class, I asked them to 45 seconds of uh, just observing their breath is uh, a practice with which you can inculcate. Mm -hmm. I did it for 10 schools, but honestly, only one school is following it. Oh, yeah. Don't, don't worry about don't worry about these people taking it lightly because when there's overwhelming 90% of this negativity around you. Um, you know, you cannot uh, make all of a sudden change. That's why the society is like that. So all you do is, like I, know I have been talking about these things uh, on the social media for two years now, right? Uh, but I don't know yeah. if people are changed or not, you know? Uh, but some people call me for yeah. consultations because they have individual problems. But that's okay. I have a big uh, course on the burnout course. People call me right there. But then you can also consult me if you want to, you know? Then I can talk to you on the Zoom and then uh, discuss this. Education is a big topic on that. I can tell you a lot of things I did with education. Some, what it is, is put it out, but don't expect anything yeah. from it. <laughs> uh, I know. Yeah. Okay, that's what is wonderful. Uh, I see, uh, I, I have attended your rooms, not much on it, but whenever I see I'm here, 
uh, I see that your energy never fades even at the last minute. Yeah. The same as it was the first minute. <laughs> no, there is something called uh, ever renewing energy. Okay. See, I want to give something to you because I want to show my love to you like that, right? Then yeah. why love to give? Then how can I have depletion of energy? Doctor, uh, if there is a simple question which I ask, I mean, uh, I am in from the e-learning industry, so we have one thought over there. If you take a complex uh, message and if we can make make it understandable or comprehensible to, let's say, a seventh standard kid, yeah. uh, then your message is strong is what do they need. Very so true. when we talk about neuroplasticity and uh, habit formation, a new habit formation or getting rid of a bad habit, People no, no. come with their own uh, theories, 21 days, 30 Replacing days. Replacing the bad habit with a new bad habit. Replacing the bad habit with a new habit. And also, not reinforcing the bad habit to begin with. Exactly, exactly. How, how, how much time does it take? Uh, I mean, I know it is a very uh, mature question. So, I mean, people come out with their own things. How, how many days should I practice? Uh, so that it becomes What is the hurry? Yeah. Just to practice one time. See, you are unnecessarily so putting a target for yourself where you cannot have a target. You don't know. You have to deal with it as it comes, right? Right. Okay, I was going to close. Then you opened a uh, question and that brought out this mm -hmm. neuroplasticity. It's wonderful, right? I'm, I'm delighted about it. Yeah, your answers makes a lot of sense. You should not put a target. It is very yeah. unique and very individualistic. Okay. Just do it. That's it. Just do it. And that giving itself gets you a lot of satisfaction and happiness. Like I'm happy that I answered your question. That's good enough. <laughs> okay. Okay. When are you next time coming to India, Andhra? Is there any chance? Any chance you're coming over? I don't know. <laughs> Sponsor me because I have some talks coming up. Then I may put them together and come there. Usually I'm doing online these days and I'm not allowing people to uh, arrange everything uh, to there because uh, uh, one thing is uh, I'm busy, occupied. Other thing is uh, uh, when I come there, a lot of relatives, a lot of people are there. I have to spend a lot of time and I have to wait at least three weeks of time to just... Uh, be formal with people, right? Relatives. But you know, these days I am on the phone with them almost every day. Every day, actually, you know. So it doesn't seem like before, like we are separated so much by the distance. We are communicating. They can't talk to me, their own very, very severe problems. Every day I have the opportunity to talk to them about them. So they became more closer now in the COVID than before. See? So uh, <laughs> that's there. But then I will come, but I don't know when I can come. Uh, it's not in the plans. But then um, I have come on some universities and talked to them about education, about uh, this need for... My pet thing is, how can we bring the ancient wisdom into present day use of our stress and burnout so that we can deal with them effectively? Uh, not that you have to go into a particular religion. I'm writing a book on that. It's called uh, Modern Challenges, Ancient Solutions. You know, I have a Facebook group. If you want, you can come, uh, Sundar and uh, Siva. Uh, you both uh, join me on the Facebook. I can send you that group's invitation. Then you come there. And sometimes I come there uh, live and then I post there. And you can also post and that way you can interact better with me. And also, this series I'm starting towards the wellness world health system. It's not like a, just a talk for me. It's more like a what I want to do in my life. I want to help the health system to be more wellness oriented, even a little bit. Okay, that's good enough. And then also leave some work so that people understand what it is. Like I am 68, no medications, really a lot of energy, um, happy. And enjoying things and I don't expect anything from you guys. I just come and talk and if you engage me, I'll talk. <laughs> that's it. That's good enough, right? Uh, but things are happening. Um, so I just want to do my work uh, that I think important I should do. You know? so, uh, 
Yeah. Yes, doc. That will be a treasure, doc. Your book and your book comes out. Yeah. Uh, I really feel that is a necessity of this. Uh, yeah, the whole book is about uh, taking a global look at the problems. The first problem we are dealing with is a global heat. And then uh, everyday solutions, somebody like us, a common man can do. Like, for example, I talk about uh, doing all the stuff like a, don't use the plastic and the water, all those things. But then I also talk about uh, how not to be rampant consumer, try to be simple in the life, minimal in life and all that. Uh, uh, aparigraha, they call about in yoga, that is a, a process where they limit outward things as much as possible, not only because they are a waste, also they want to be reverent to the earth. Because earth is us, earth is our mother, you know, so we want to focus that. So I could talk about that uh, extensively too. And the next chapter is about wars. How many wars are happening? Like that it goes down, corporations, families, uh, individuals, like that. The whole book contains all these uh, expansion, uh, examination of the deeper issue, global thinking, and local action. And bringing the ancient into wisdom into local action, along with the scientific thing that we already progressed. Thank you very much. Okay, I'll be seeing you now. Okay. Sure, doctor. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Bye -bye. Yeah, I mean.